dude. How are you? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. How you doing? I'm fine. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Uh, so, if I recall correctly, you said you were a Terran player, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, what league are we working with today? Uh, Platinum 2. Okay, the sick. And do you have like a preferred playstyle, like a like mech or bio or anything like that? Yeah, actually, I'm playing a uh, all in two ways at seven minutes. So I'm playing bio with, with tanks. Okay. And do you want to just like do you want to keep doing that style and like make it better, or do you want to change it and experiment with something else? I mean, I have some issues with Terran, a TBT, when it's going macro. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or with her, if you uh, they are playing with the uh, Banglin, it's a little rusty. And with Protoss, if they use uh, Storm, it's a little hard for me too. Sure. So th th those are those things are all going to be really hard to deal with because if you're playing a two base attack style, that doesn't mm -hmm. really have a lot of ways you'll win the game unless you win the game with your attack. Like you have to be, you have to do good damage with your attack for that to be effective. Like, you can't just not kill them and then play a good game from there. So, if you wanted to... Yeah, okay. if, you, if you wanted to try to, like, learn a build that goes up to, like, three, four, five bases while still doing Marine Tank, that's fine. That'd be, that'd be good. Or if you want to, like, really fixate on two base Marine Tank, that's still okay. But you just need to, like... Um, you would need to really think about how you want to attack somebody because you need to kill them with that or otherwise like cripple them with that otherwise you're gonna die so oh, i prefer to uh, get yeah. better in two base you want to keep it on two base yes sure that's fine so we'll talk a lot about your micro then even though you're platinum it's probably like I, normally i would not tell people in platinum to really focus on their micro but if you really want to just two base it then you kind of have to so we'll we'll do we'll okay. talk about your decision making and your micro and stuff like that. Uh, okay. And then, uh, do you have uh, like a replay prepared as well to take a look at? Yeah, I have you. Okay. So, just uh, to make it easy, the super easy way to do it, just grab whatever replay you want to take a look at and drop it in Discord. You can just like drag it from the folder into Discord's chat, and it'll just upload it to me, and I can watch it, and I'll share my screen with you through Discord. Okay, give me a second. Sure. Mm -hmm. Nice, I see it. Okay, so now I'm going to open it. And I'm going to share my screen with you. And you should see on Discord, you should see my StarCraft screen now. Yes. Okay, cool. Now you can also see like where my mouse is and where my camera is. So you can see what I'm looking at whenever I talk about it. Okay. Uh, all right. So uh, this is a Terran versus Terran um, specifically, which is fine. So we'll talk. We'll focus a lot on TVT, and we'll talk about your build order and everything. And uh, okay. At at any point in time while I'm talking as well, if you, if anything I said doesn't make sense, or if uh, if you're like, wait, 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 say that again, or if you have a question. Uh, you please feel free to interrupt me, even if I'm in, in the middle of talking, so you can let me know what's going on with you, like if, whatever you're thinking about. All right, so you, you, you took a gas really fast, and this is totally fine, but automatically, if you take a gas this early, you should definitely be taking like a super fast factory. Uh, this is really fast gas, which definitely prioritizes aggression over, which it pairs with your build, right? Which is fine. Uh, but this is already a, a very aggressive thing you're doing. Be ready. So we'll see how you use your units. <laughs> and yo, Mac, thank you very much for the sub, dude. Appreciate the, the tier one, man. Much love. SCB ready. Okay. And then you're making SCVs, you're building your racks. We'll see uh, what else follows this up. But, so your gas right now is going to be a bit interesting. It's going to be a bit, like, lopsided. I would say if you're going to go for, like, like a factory super fast, you'd be better off taking, a, like, even, like, a second gas and being really aggressive with it. You could go, like, 1-1-1. One, one, one. 
Which, well, we'll see what you do, right? But if you were gonna go for like a barracks and do an expansion, your gas is way too early, I think. It's too early. I think so, yeah. If you're gonna go expand yeah. now. Because you have Yeah. Like all you need, realistically, all you need is enough gas to make the Reaper when your barracks is done. And in this game particularly, when your barracks finished, you only need fifty. You can see right there on the screen there's Reaper costs 50-50, so you need 50 gas, yeah. and you have 84. So you have a shitload of gas. <laughs> you don't okay. need that much, and it's what that's doing to you is these workers mining that extra 34 gas, it's not free because you sacrificed minerals to do it, and you're trying to expand right now. So if you didn't mine as much gas as fast as you did, you could actually be expanding very quickly now and having a Reaper pop out instead of delaying your expansion and having a bunch of gas in the bank. So the perfect way to do it would be you make your barracks first, and right after you make your barracks, then you make your gas right after. So racks, then gas. Okay, and then. Okay. Yeah, that, this expansion is super late. It's going to definitely screw you a little bit. And then now you're going for a factory. Uh, so this factory wouldn't be as fast as it is uh, normally if you take your gas a little bit later because you're obviously taking it when you don't have a lot of gas left because you had a gas surplus earlier. Uh, so what you could do, as soon as you build your, uh, as soon as you build wow. your, your command center, you could pair this now okay. with like another depot because you're gonna supply block soon if you keep making units uh, and you keep making SCVs. So then you would make a depot, and then after you make a depot, and you keep making like one reaper at a time, you can make a second gas as soon as you make the depot, because when you can afford it, essentially. And you can go into a factory then with making reapers and into a factory. And I, uh, we'll see how many reapers you make. We'll see what your plan is. You don't have to make multiple yeah. reapers. You only make one? Yeah. Okay. So if you only make one, this reaper should... I'm a little bit worried about your... Okay, let me say it like this. You haven't scouted anything yet. And the way you're doing this build right now, there's a lot of shit you could die to because what you're doing is you're not scouting and you're pairing this with a reactor really fast and you're pairing this with a natural that's exposed really fast because it's not being built in your base. It's being built in the middle of the natural, which is where you want it to be, right? But if this guy... Did anything proxy related to you, whether it be proxy Marauder, proxy Reaper, you would probably just die. And you don't know if it is or isn't happening because you haven't ever scouted yet. So one thing I would definitely recommend you add into your build would be make one SCV, scout your opponent, and a perfect time to do that would be as soon as you build your gas, just grab one SCV, either the next SCV that gets built or the next, like just one SCV off your mineral line and go scout his base. And just make sure he's not proxying you. Because if he is proxying you, you should definitely put this command center in the high ground. And you should definitely not make a reactor this fast and instead make more units. If you don't do that and you're getting proxied, your chances of dying are very high. Does that make okay, sense so far? Yeah, of course. Okay. And then another way you can also figure it out too is if the guy's proxying you, you could also add a bunker like right there. And what that would do is it would cover the ramp if it was like Marauder based. And he like, pulled, let's say he even pulled SCVs or some shit and he was like really all in. If you have a bunker right here and you have a uh, Reaper or Marine inside of it, it's gonna be really hard for Terran to ever break that. And you could bring your own SCVs and repair it and shit. And it would make your life way easier at not dying. And then behind that, you can still do your things. Like you could go into your more units out of your barracks and go into your factory and, you know, get ready to go tanks and all that kind of shit. But definitely need to scout, because right now I'm super scared for you, because you have no idea what's going on. And now that your Reaper is also sitting defensively, you still have no idea what's going on. Ready. Yeah. So that bunker right there, not yes. the big, I'm not the biggest fan of this. I only really Why like, it, it, so I like this bunker a lot if this was Perdos. And I don't think I would even really like it that much if it was Zerg. The reason why I don't like it against Terran is because this bunker is only going to be useful 
if your opponent decides he wants to push you early game with like hellions and a couple reapers that try to drive into the front of your natural which is a somewhat common build that you'll run into as you get higher like as you continue to get higher level as a player i don't feel like you're probably gonna run into that build a whole lot in platinum uh you might run into it sometimes but basically if you're gonna open up with a factory this fast as soon as you get either a cyclone or a siege tank there is no threat that you can't deal with without a bunker. Like, you don't need a bunker to deal with everything. Because a cyclone or a tank is going to shut everything down anyways, defensively. This All this bunker does is it slows down your minerals a little bit because you're investing into a bunker that you realistically don't need. Uh, and another way to deal with this, a cheaper way and a more effective thing you could do, again, is realize if you scout somebody, and let's say he has a natural as well. Let's just look at his base for a second. And so far, this guy, if, if you would have scouted him, you would have went to the ramp, you would have saw no proxy and double depot blocking you out of his base, which is totally fine. Th th this means a couple things, right? This could be like, okay, like what he's doing right now, he could either be teching or he could be making a command center back here. He could be going for like five racks back here with no gas at all. And he might do an SCV pool or some weird shit like that. Like there's a lot of options that he could be doing, but he's not proxying you because he's got his barracks here and he's making marines. That's also a sign right there too. If he shows you he's making marines, he's not making gas in reapers. So again, that means that if this guy is not making gas on reaper, he's either saving gas for tech faster. So if he is teching, it'll be faster now, or he doesn't have gas at all. And he's being really mineral heavy with either command center SCV based stuff, or he's going mass barracks with marine based stuff because it's all minerals. So I hope that makes sense, but getting a scout here would tell you so much right now. And your Reaper also, it was the, the thing too is, is if you saw he wasn't proxied, absolutely your Reaper should go over here now and scout his base. Because if you got a Reaper and jump up, jump up, you go in here and you go, oh, you're teching to Starport super fast. I now know exactly what you're doing. And you'd have no question at all. And this bunker doesn't really make a lot of sense against someone who's going Marine tank. Because if this guy, let's say he does go Marine Tank and like Viking or something, which is what this co totally could be right now. He's going to siege your bunker. You're not going to be able to repair it. It's going to die and you're not going to be able to punish him for killing your bunker. And it's going to be a waste of investment. It's going to do nothing because you can outrage. Yeah, yeah, you can outrage a bunker with a tank and it doesn't you can't really take advantage of that. OK. Yeah, your second gas is a little bit too late. I always want to be starting your second gas around the time when you start your factory. Uh, and like I said earlier, if that's around the time when also you're going to be making your second depot, that'd be perfect time to take your gas. So this gas is super late. This gas was way too early, and this gas is way too late. So first gas pairs with the barracks, and second gas pairs with the factory. Okay. Yeah. And, and then... Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the barracks as well right now uh, because this is too much that you, you can't afford this this fast with everything you're doing. So what I feel like this should look like is you ideally, ideally, I would have preferred you to have gone for a starport. If you're going to go for just like three buildings only right now and that's all you're going to use for a little bit, definitely go for that starport. And then you have the ability to have a lot of range as a defense. Like you can swap over the starport to the reactor if you really needed to. And you can, even though you want to go ultimately into Marine Tank Medivac, you could actually make this defensively a little bit of Marines with no add on, and a reactor and starport with Vikings, and a tech lab factory with tanks. And if you did that, if you went reactor starport with a tech lab factory and you just made tank Viking, you would completely shut down. A 111 from this guy while having an expansion because this guy is most likely going to do one of two things he's going to either push the front of your base with viking tank or he's going to drop your base with medevac tank marine and either way all you got to do is seed your tanks in an area that zone out all of his marines and keep his tanks where they are because you're like barely out of range of his tanks and then your vikings push the medevacs back kill the medevacs make him lose vision and then you slowly crawl your tanks forward because I, I don't know if you know this, but a siege tank can shoot farther than it can see. 
So, like, if I have a siege tank right here, for instance, its attack range might be that far right there, but it can only see that far. So the yeah, Viking, that, yeah, yeah. The, the Viking makes up the difference, right? It makes up the excess. So, if you have tank Viking against someone who's doing something like this, you literally just like can't die. It's so hard to break that if you're defensively going tank Viking, and it pairs right into what you want to do, which is marine tank, medevac, and Viking, like a two base timing attack, because Vikings will give you so much of a uh, power to push with with vision so your build your build definitely could be fixed i tell you what like after this game's over and we get through this entirely i'll definitely make a build for you that i think you should use and you could i'll give you the replay and you could like okay that could be like your guideline build that you want to emulate and copy right to make it not so you don't have to like memorize everything i'm saying so you could just use the build order repeatedly uh but yeah, definitely get your build needs some improvement though, for sure. Okay, and then you're going forward. Yeah, your starport is so late. I'm super scared for you. Because right now, the, the later your starport is, this guy, you're, you're giving that guy the advantage of exactly what I'm telling you could have had yourself, right? He could abuse you so hard with medevac or uh, or Viking. Because the thing about a, a medevac too is, is if neither one of you has a Viking, a medevac fills the same role as a Viking. Because it could just sit over the tanks with vision and kill them. Uh, at least if there's a Viking in play, it creates now an air battle that has to exist. And whoever wins the Viking battle gains control of the air. But you're not even having a starport, so you don't even have any control of air. So it's a bit scary. <laughs> yeah. It is. And then you're stopping production on your SCVs every now and again. That's a little bit brutal for you. Also, another huge tip. Huge, 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 huge tip. If you're going to two-base timing attack somebody, you really need to not fuck your mules up. This is so important to not fuck this up. Uh, every single time you miss a mule, you're missing windows of time on setting up your timing to be proper. Because you're stretching your money as thin as it can be stretched when you're doing a timing attack like this because you're trying to make like every mineral and every gas count for like because you're just you're making extra production faster so you're not really heavily investing into economy so you like you're, you're gonna have a lot of cost that needs to be able to be afforded early game and now he goes he goes battle cruiser so now you're, you're, you're yeah. totally fucked yeah i am yeah so again this could have been so like if we go back right let's go back for a second and let's talk about what could have been scouted, right? So we'll, we'll speed through this a little bit faster though, because we'll talk about what you could have done here. So if you're if you pull your one of your SCVs like this, right? Like you, you pull off an SCV at like, well, we're talking like 17 supply, like right about now. You make your barracks, you make your gas, and you pull off an SCV off the mineral line, or you make your next SCV that builds rally down to like here or something. And then as soon as it spawns, re-rally the command center back to the mineral line. So you don't send multiple SCVs to scout because you don't need to send multiple. So you have one SCV going to scout. You get to the guy's base by probably like two minutes. Like 1.45, two minutes, somewhere around there. We'll just say two minutes. So your SCV's crossing the map, and you just arrived. And you're like, cool, I want to see what you're doing. You get blocked out of his base. Let's say that he raises the depot. He doesn't let you in. And uh, you see a Marine come over and shoot you, and then you back off. And you're like, okay, he made a Marine. And he made a wall already, which I don't have yet. It's not yours. His is done, and you just started your depot, right? And he does not have a command center here. So you're like, interesting. Okay, I run away now. Your SCV goes home. And now it's it's going home, and your Reaper now goes, cool, no proxy. And your Reaper now crosses the map, and your Reaper gets here by like 2 minutes and 40 seconds. Or like 235, 240. So now we go faster. Your Reaper gets to his base. We'll say 240. It's very fair. Your Reaper definitely would be there by then. Your Reaper jumps into his base right now at 2.40. And as per time progresses, you're like, cool, scouting his base. And you see a starport. You see a factory. You're crossing through. You see double gas. You see the Marines over here. Still no add-on. You, you maybe go back. And it is what it is. Like, that's... Either your Reaper dies by Marines zoning him and killing it. Or you actually maybe get out of his base. Maybe you throw a grenade at these Marines. And you actually somehow squeeze by. And you get out of his base. Let's just hypothetically say you died and you didn't uh, get the Reaper out, okay? So let's go forward again a little bit more. 
Let's give about a full like minute and a half to go by here. Let's give it like all the way till like 430 because you just you would have died in his base by like three minutes or so. So now a lot of time has gone by from what you saw earlier at three minutes. Okay. And now let's say you scanned his base right now. You scan like right here and you're like, cool. What are you doing now? And you see a fusion core, you see another command center, and you see now a tech lab starport and not a factory. This would be a huge amount of information for you. That is very practical that you could have done this to figure this out. And the reason why this is very practical that you could have figured this out and why this would scan would have made sense is two reasons. Number one, this guy double gassed before he expanded and he teched up to a starport really, really fast. So you not only saw that he double gassed really early, but you saw where he committed his tech and the location and all that shit. You like, you actually physically didn't have to question and guess, what are you doing? He showed it to you in his base when you scouted it with a Reaper, if you did, where you're like, oh, you went for a starport really, really fast. Now, that's the first thing. You see where he allocated his resources. You see how he invested. And the second part is, if you go back to three minutes, <coughs> where your Reaper would have probably died, you see a starport that is just finished and you saw a factory, you know, that's sitting next to it. The fact that he builds these buildings right next to each other is a big sign, by the way, because whenever you, like, I'm sure you know this is Terran. Whenever you want to swap add-ons, you don't ever go, oh, I want to swap a factory to a, to a barracks. I'm going to build my factory right there. I'm going to move my barracks over here. And we're going to do a fucking add-on swap. <laughs> You're never going to do that, right? You're going to be like, I'm going to build my factory there, right above it, so when I want to add-on swap, it's easy. Same thing with what he's doing, right? That's very possible right now. Uh, so that's a sign already that tells you there's a good chance he could add on swap. And the second thing about it is, is if you if you don't know what things take and the amount of time to build, you should definitely learn these things. Especially if you're going to be the kind of player who's going to do timing attacks. You need to know what shit takes in terms of time to build. So if this guy wants to make uh, siege tanks and vikings or something like that. How many siege tanks and how many Vikings would we be expecting to see from now until about four minutes and 30 seconds? And about four minutes and 30 seconds would be realistic for him to like decide, you know what, it's time to push. I'm gonna go attack you now because I have some of these units. And if you don't know how many units that would probably be from the moment that these things are completed and ready to like a good chunk of time later, that's something you should know. And, I'm, and the 90 seconds that I'm giving you here is just, it's like a good, rough estimation of like you're not waiting too long but you're waiting long enough to figure out what he's really committing to so to explain what i mean okay this is i hope this is going to make sense because I, I feel like what i how i just explained it might be confusing but i hope this makes sense scan for you is really expensive and we're playing under the assumption that your reaper died from the first scout so if your reaper didn't die Scout in again multiple times. That's fucking wonderful. Scout every 30 seconds and see what you can see. Keep getting reads on it if the guy lets you do that. But if he kills your Reaper, you want to be a little bit more conservative with scans because you can't scan every 30 seconds because that's really, really expensive. You really want to drop mules, not scan five times. So if we wait a good chunk of time for 90 seconds, that's just a, a nice, healthy amount of time to wait, we can see if this guy made tank viking or something like that we would probably be expecting either two or maybe three tanks with probably also like maybe two to three vikings and the reason why is because a tank has a build time of 32 seconds and he already started one before your reaper died so if your reaper died and you know you waited 90 seconds to scan that you're probably going to see like three tanks and also in the push like this tanks are going to be the priority and then if he's going to make starport units to support that, he doesn't have infinite resources. He's definitely one base all in you, it looks like, he's as of what you saw earlier, because he went all the way to top tier tech with double gas. So if we went Vikings with it as well, he's probably not going to be able to make reactor Vikings on cooldown. His starport will be the secondary to his factory, because it's a tank based attack, is what it, from what it would have looked like. And we would see probably like two or three Vikings as a result of that. That would be normal looking. That would be like, oh, cool. These guys, this guy's got a couple of Vikings, like three tanks. And he's got maybe like eight Marines or something. And he's going to push. 
that would be what it what you should be seeing if it's like a starport based attack or sorry a tank based attack and it be it makes sense because we're basing the attack off of the priority of the attack and the priority of the attack would have been siege tanks and we know how much a siege tank takes to make for time and then everything else just gets filled in around it now if you were to scan here at like 430 again which is again 90 seconds after the fact You'd be expecting to see like three tanks if this was going to be a tank based attack And if you saw nothing in his base and a factory was still in a tech lab I'm gonna give you a, a quiz here really fast. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna quiz you for a second I want to make you think about this if you still saw a starport right there the way he had it before and a tech lab on a factory right here right now and There was no fusion core But there was no units in his base. What do you think would be happening in the game right now? What would you what would you think if he saw that? Um. What you by think? now, make it Raven. So okay, no, no, hold on. Uh, one more. Uh, hear me out one more time. If I want you to pretend that he had a factory on the tech lab, no starport tech lab. So factory tech lab. Oh, okay. And yes. then like it, like if his base looked still like this. If his base looked like this, but. You scanned it 90 seconds later, and there was nothing in his base. Like, no units in his base at all. But this is what you see 90 seconds later. What do you think he's doing? I guess I think he doesn't have a plan. So, if this guy was going for a, uh, like, like a build where he stays on of tech lab on a factory for a very long time. He makes a starport and he make, never makes an add-on. And then he makes mm. uh, barracks that also never makes an add-on. There's two builds you should be afraid of. Just two builds. And then the two builds I told you earlier. One is a medevac siege tank marine drop that would be going into your base. And another one would be a viking siege tank marine push that would be pushing the front of your base. And knowledge is power like fucking crazy in StarCraft 2 because if you identify what is happening before it happens, you can make a reaction to properly deal with it and a I'm going to I'm going to quiz you one more time because I want you, I just want your brain to be thinking about what's going on here. If I were to ask you what is a good response to medevac tank or uh viking tank with what you have, what would you think like with the way your build is going, what do you think a good response would be to something like that? I will put my tank in the center of the map on my base. Okay. And then what, you, what else would you do? Uh, drop the marines out to the bunker. Okay. So you'd probably die then. <laughs> the reason why. Okay. It's good. Sorry. I just I, I want you to think about it. I'm quizzing you because I want you to. Act, it's more. It's more interesting for you to actually think about what you're gonna do rather than me tell you. Because I feel like uh, if I just tell you all the time, you might just forget what I say, and then it doesn't make any a lot of sense. But remember, if I like, earlier when I said if you made a Viking yourself, you could actually swap your Viking to reactor, even though you expanded, and you could actually destroy. Viking tank, or you could destroy his version of 111 with your own version of 111. Because you're, if you're, if he's going Marine tank medevac or Marine tank Viking, either way, as long as you are going Viking tank, you can win. And the reason that ultimately why this makes sense is because you could have a reactor on your starport, which means you'll always win the air battle. And he doesn't have that if that's what he was going to do. If that's what he was doing. And the reason why you can afford that and he cannot is because you have an expansion. He doesn't have that. So you could literally make more units than he can and kill him with Viking tank. If that's what he was doing. Yeah. You have to be able to identify shit like this to not die. If you're going to be an aggressive player, these are the things you need to understand in the game. You can't just never scout and attack and expect to have a good win rate. Because you're going to blind counter yourself a lot, and you're going to die a lot if you don't put effort into scouting. Which is why I said this is the harder way to play the game. You have to be able to do, you you have to start doing this though. 
Otherwise, you're literally flipping a coin every game, hoping for the best. And you, you're you not really going to win the game off of strategy. You're going to win the game off of chance at that point. Okay. So, anyways, uh, another uh, a cool tip as well. The final thing I'll say, as we'll move on from this point. But the final thing I'll say about... Uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, the the build right here. If you did, like, this is the final time I'll talk about it. If you did scan here and you saw, okay, Fusion Core, okay, React, or, or like a Tech Lab Starport. If you saw this, I'll just, this will be a yes or no question for you. If you scanned here right now and you saw this, this was your screen right here that you saw, would you expect Battle Cruisers? Yes. Okay. So if you expected Battle Cruisers as a result of seeing this, Absolutely, 100%. You should be putting a reactor on a starport because the best reaction, by far, that you can make to a battle cruiser is making Vikings and making them as fast as you can, which is what a, a reactor yes. would allow you to do. Another thing you should be doing right now, immediately, the second you, if you would have seen this, immediately make an engineering bay so that you can make a turret in your mineral lines that you can repair to get the battle cruiser the fuck away from your SCVs. And it guards your, your resource collection. You can actually guard your SCVs while they mine resources so that he can't just teleport in your base and kill all your SCVs and you have to run away. So those two things definitely should have happened for you. But again, you never scouted once, so you don't you have no idea what's going on. And this is a game of chance yeah. now rather than a game of strategy. Maybe. Okay, and then now he shows up with the BC. And now here goes all your SCVs, right? Ouch, ouchies. <laughs> yeah. Good cap. Yeah, this BC is doing a ton of damage, for sure. So yeah, absolutely, 100% should try to squeeze in a turret wherever you can. I know this is distracting as fuck for you, watching this PC just fly around your base, and you're like, oh my god, it's going to keep yeah. killing everything. But absolutely, yeah, or, yeah it, no, seriously, it totally is. You definitely need a turret, though. One turret per mineral line, so that you can... It, it'll Because I've noticed this guy as well. This is Platinum League, so this guy is not micring his BC the best either. Multiple times throughout this fight, this guy has targeted buildings when your units are nearby. And he's not really prioritized SCVs nearly as much as he could have. He started prioritizing SCVs, and then he went over there and killed a bunker that didn't need to be attacked. And then he, like, allowed the Cyclone to fucking destroy him for most of his PC's health. So, this guy definitely didn't micro it the best himself. But if you had a turret in the mineral line, and you just guarded the turret, and every time he went in the mineral line to, to attack you, my guess is going to be he's going to auto-attack the turret. And if you repair that, that turret is going to drill his BC about as hard as your Cyclone did. And he's going to get out of your mineral line really early because of that. Because of that. And if he ever camps an area near your mineral line, that's when you want to use your marines to like push him away. And uh, you've obviously your Vikings as well. You're making the right units. It's just that you're reacting to something. So actually, let me say it like this. This is a really good way to understand StarCraft. A big thing about this game is not reacting to something after it's already happening. It's about reacting to something that's going to happen in the future. And if you can't do that, you can never play aggressive st strategies properly. So the, again, the, that's it's, it's another way to word it, but that's exactly what I told you earlier. Your the biggest thing you got to focus on, and if you want to play aggressive two base attack styles, is you need to start learning how to read builds and abuse builds. With what's the best way to play against what's about to happen, not how do I deal with what's happening already. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Yes. So you definitely need to scout more. That's the, the big thing I'm trying to tell you here is absolutely you need to scout more. A lot more. Uh, you need to you need to have I ideally about two to three scouts before you do your attack. And your attack also should be hitting your opponent's base by probably seven minutes. I would say three scouts would be great. Like a scout once at like two minutes. 
Scout again around three minutes. Scout again around like five, six minutes. <clears throat> and if you can do all of those, and like if you can scout more than that, like by the way, when I said three, that's like the minimum. I don't want you to be like, oh, three is like a lot. Three is actually the less, like least that you should be doing. You should be actually scouting him like five times. And you should be getting like follow up reads on like what he's doing. And ideally, when the number five where that comes from is from your Reaper, if it's not dead. But if your Reaper dies, then uh, then you gotta probably drop it down to like three scouts because you'll get the three, the initial Reaper scout and then it dies. You'll have the initial SCV scout and then your SCV is gonna leave. And then you have like one scan. That'd be like three, that'd be fine. But if you have your Reaper alive still, ideally maybe you scout him like five times. You scout once with your SCV and like four more times with your Reaper. Just keep going into his base if he lets you and see, okay, what are you doing now? Are you going into tanks? Are you going into, and you, like by the way, like here's it for instance. You don't even have to see a siege tank pop out of the out of the uh, factory to know he's going tanks if your reaper is like right here and it gets shot by a tank on the high ground and you just run away and you're like oh he shot me with a tank he's clearly making a tank right like you, there's a lot of ways you can scout it with the reaper the reaper can just regenerate health and what you're doing here too this is an overreaction Absolutely yeah. overreacting. <laughs> you only want one turret per mineral line. Definitely. My bad. Yeah. No, it's, it's it's okay. I mean, it's just it's fucking you over really bad. But you just want one turret in this mineral line and like one turret in that mineral line and let your Vikings finish off the rest here. Because right now I feel like what you're doing is you're totally neglecting your Vikings about like the fact that they're gonna pop out any second now, and you're thinking to yourself, well, I have to make multiple turrets otherwise they're never gonna go up, because he's just gonna if I make just one he'll kill it. When realistically the Vikings are gonna make them go up. And then when the Vikings come out, he teleports away. Yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. So now... I'm going to quiz you again. What do you think is going to happen in this game right now based on what's already happened? What would you... What are you, or what are you expecting to happen now? Um, mass species. Mass species? Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. I feel like the next time he comes to your base, there's going to be two of them. Yeah, me too. So what you should be doing right now is getting a turret in your mineral lines and maybe getting like one more turret around your production maybe otherwise you don't even need to do that just leave your vikings like in the back of your base and allow the bcs to hit your barracks or something for a second that's totally fine but if you just made another gas like you have here saturate that gas saturate these gases back to full again keep making scvs non-stop to allow yourself to keep making constant waves of viking if you got to a point where you had like eight viking you would be totally fine because you can micro against species all day with superior Viking count. And you can definitely, like, Vikings definitely counter BCs really well. So, as long as you're always pumping two at a time here, and you have enough resources to do that, you're 100% fine. But, like, these SCVs doing nothing is a problem. This gas not being mined now for you is a problem because you need more gas now to afford Vikings because you're not having enough. Now, I'm going to actually ask you a question. I, I do not expect you to know the answer to this, okay? But... How much gas does a Viking cost? Uh, 100? 75. You're close. I like that you're in the... I like that you're in the right ballpark. That's good. That's better than I expected, honestly. I, I was fully expecting you to have no idea. But... Thank you. Yeah, that, that, I mean, I, I, you need to know the cost of things because you need to know what is efficient. Because, again, this is something... You, these are the things you need to know if you want to play aggressive efficiently. So, if you knew... Okay, well... It's 150 gas per wave of Viking because it's 75 per and I'm making two at a time. I need to increase my gas to not only get me to 150 faster right now, but maybe even go a little bit above that so I can also still maintain usage on my factory. Which would be like definitely getting your third gas going right now. Yeah. Yeah, way too many missile turrets. This is, this is a common problem a lot of people have. They w over make static defense way too hard. When the turrets are not actually your real form of defense, they're the form of zoning. But your real form of defense is actually this, your Vikings. And the reason why, I, I, I hope this makes sense. I'll try to explain it in a way that uh, seems logical. If this guy keeps making battle cruisers, 
Okay. Mm-hmm. And he has, let's say he has like four battle cruisers, like four of them. Yeah. And let's say you make 12 missile turrets. It's actually, yeah. it scales worse for you the more turrets you make because you don't have all 12 turrets in one spot. Because if you did put all 12 turrets in one spot, he could just avoid it and kill everywhere else in your base. So usually what's going to happen is, is you, let's say you make a bunch of turrets and you spread them out around your base to cover all the areas of your base. One missile turret can't even beat one battle cruiser by itself unless it's repaired. And if you're putting a bunch of turrets around your base and now he's got two, three, four battle cruisers, your turret is just going to die within like one second. It's only going to get like two shots off or maybe three shots off before it's dead. And then it's gone and it's a waste of investment. Whereas if that investment instead went into economy development and unit development from that economy, you could have more Vikings because that would be your priority. And Vikings can go with the BCs wherever they go around your base. And then if he decides to really suicidally jump into some area of your base, like for instance, your mineral line, you could spam repair a turret while your Vikings kill the BCs off the turret because that turret is substantially stronger because it's getting repaired. But turrets like way the fuck over here, like this one, for instance, is not going to do shit for you. It's not going to get repaired. And also turrets behind the middle line aren't going to do shit for you either because your SCVs have to run outside to repair it, which is time that it might die to BCs. And the middle line is way better because you can immediately surround it and repair it right, right away. Again, you're, I, it's, it's just that you're making an emphasis. And you're doing like turret tracking as well. You're making an emphasis to where the turrets are the answer here and they're really not. The turrets are definitely not the answer. Uh, there's only okay. there's only one unit in this entire game that I would say the turrets would actually be a like the way you've made them here. But even then, it's still a bit much. But I'm just gonna say this really fast because this is a big tangent. I don't really wanna, I don't really want to spend a lot of time on this. The only unit in the entire game that I feel like this would be actually decent against would be if someone was a Protoss player and they were going mass Viking or uh, sorry mass Phoenix. If this guy was going mass Phoenix. And he was just flying around your base everywhere. Maybe this would be okay to make turrets spread out the way you did. And like shit like that. But realistically, not even. You don't even need to do that. Make you, Making units is like always the better option. Just making an initial set of static defense for like a baseline is good. And it, literally like one turret would be more than enough per mineral line. That'd be fine. Because it draws... And the reason why it's so good is not because... This is why it's good. It's not because it kills the BC. Which is what I feel like you're trying to make it do. It's because it draws the fire of the BC. It aggros the BC. It, may, it takes all the hits for you. It's like your shield for the workers. And you can repair that. That's why it's good. It does damage as well, which is nice. But it's never designed to really kill the BC. That'll never really happen. And when you overemphasize that and overinvest into that, you waste your time. They're like a turret, and it's dead. And it did do shit, right? You're like, okay. Yeah. And now look at your Vikings. Destroying. And you only have three. What if you had like eight of them already? Because you didn't stop using your starport forever. Like, let's go back. Watch. Th just watch this. Not only was your starport ridiculously late. Okay, your starport was so fucking late. But watch when the first BC hits you. First BC's in your base right now. And you have the idea to make a starport. Now watch this. Starport is done at 5 minutes and 31 seconds. You can be making Vikings right now. And you can make it, we'll just say 5.30 to make it really easy to understand. From 5.30 until about almost 9 minutes, you make you made 3 Vikings. And 5.30, every 30 seconds could be making 2, 2, 2. So that's 4 a minute or 2 every 30 seconds. So if we're talking from 5.30 to 9 minutes, that's a difference of... Uh, what is that? Three and a half minutes. So that's uh, two Vikings, and that's uh, seven rounds of two Vikings. That's like fourteen Vikings you could have made, and you made three. So like, is because it, it's just two every thirty. That's all we gotta understand. Two Vikings every thirty seconds, because it's thirty second build time. You make one, but a reactor makes you make two, right? So look at like from five thirty one. How long takes you? How long does it take you to make Vikings, which you can afford right now as well? 
This is a priority that needs to be. What's up? Like what's a question? Uh, so like, it's been like just. It's trying to understand like how. You're like. What the priority is for what you should be doing at certain points in time, and the I feel like your panic reaction to battle cruiser is mm -hmm. it's just to make nothing right you're making marines yeah and it needs to be making vikings 100 percent for sure making a cyclone was okay but making vikings is definitely better Base is under attack. and now you made th and here's the problem as well you made three at once you made you, you queued it up with all your all your resources you're like fuck it make vikings you did it at six minutes and three seconds you just queued it up so you got two being made right now and you got one in queue afterwards and you never touch the starboard again. You never touch it again. So you gotta definitely make more of an emphasis on doing something like going four, five, four, five, four, five, check your production, four, five, four, five, even during this. And this wouldn't be this wouldn't come as such a shock and such like oh fuck! A BC's in my base if you scouted his base a little more. So, so far, everything we talked about, how are you feeling about it? Great. You feel like it's making sense? You feel like it's helping? Yeah, sure. Okay. Because these are like, th these are fundamental things that you have to be able to do to play a style that is not just mindlessly macroing a bunch of workers and making units def like defensively and sitting there. You have to be able to make decisions to deal with whatever your decisions your opponent make, you have to counterplay your opponent a little bit. Like you can't just be making mass tanks while they make battle cruisers. And uh, and I know you did this because you never scouted. But also another thing is is you need to uh, definitely try to stay on top of your macro during crisis like this, like during problems like this. Because that's definitely brutal for you. Because this starport literally never gets touched again. Right. 531 was when you made Vikings. And. It's now over nine minutes. You never touch the starport again. Okay. What, what did you make those? You made two more Vikings at. 9 minutes and 22 seconds. So from 531 to 922. That's almost 4 minutes of doing nothing with your starport after that. Uh, that's a very long time to never touch it again. And then you, you did make another Cyclone and then a Thor. And uh, although that's not the worst, I think it's oh, it's okay-ish. The problem Here's the problem with, with that, okay? I, I, I'm not going to quiz you here. I'll just give you an answer the reason why i'm not a, a big fan of you going for uh a cyclone over a viking this is very logical it'll make sense and it i, ho I hope it, it should make sense but oh, it's talking about yeah. resource efficiency okay so eat poop for uh, cycle uh, a, a cyclone costs 150 minerals and 100 gas a viking costs 150 minerals so it's same mineral cost but less gas and they have they both have something in common they're both relatively good against the bc i would say a viking is a little bit better because a viking can chase a bc forever and a viking or a cyclone gets stuck on the edge of ground so i think a viking is ultimately better but they both share one common flaw against the bc and it's that they can both be one shot by yamato cannon so you're making a higher cost unit that is more susceptible to being killed by Yamato Cannon. Now a Thor, on the other hand, is way more fucking expensive. This fucking thing costs 300 minerals and 200 gas. So it costs literally double the cost of a Cyclone. And it costs more than double the cost of a Viking. Because a Viking, if you make two of them out of a reactor... It would be same mineral cost at 300, but it would only be 150 gas instead of 200. So you'd save 50 gas there, which you're definitely struggling to generate right now to make more Vikings. 
And a Thor is susceptible again to Yamato Cannon in the sense that a Yamato Cannon can two-shot a Thor. So two, two Yamato Cannons can kill two Vikings and two Yamato Cannons can kill a Thor. The common denominator here is Yamato Cannon kills everything at the same pace as everything else you're making here. For the cost that you're making, Yamato Cannon still kills all of it the same. But your cost could be cheaper if you made the cheaper unit that's actually more effective here. Because you could actually weather the storm of Yamato Cannon, take your losses, but then have more units because you made cheaper, better units. That could not only take losses from Yamato, but then power overpower the BCs when they're on cooldown. Uh, okay. So yeah, you're making you're definitely fucking yourself by you're you're countering yourself with how he uses your mono cannon here. Mineral field depleted. And every I want you to know too, everything I'm saying to you right now is very 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 prevalent for the early game. It's super 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 relevant for early game stuff. Uh, once you get to a point where you have like let's say like 150 or like 180 supply. It doesn't really matter as much then, especially if we're talking about the fact that you could have like 75 SCVs or like 80 SCVs or 60 SCVs or whatever. If you have a lot of SCVs and you're on like three, four, five base saturation, it's not as important to be like, well, you got to cut, cut your cost here of your units and make sure you maximize. But if we're talking about how you're on like 25 SCVs or like 30 SCVs on barely two base saturation, and you're getting rushed by a guy on one base battlecruiser, you definitely want to maximize your cost because you don't have a lot of resources to work with. So when you don't have a lot of resources, you got to maximize it. When you have a shitload, it kind of is you make whatever you want. Try to make something that's logical, but overall it's totally fine what you make. So at this point now, the Thor thing is, is fine. I don't mind that you're making Thors as much as you grow in expansions. But for the opener of what you did there, this guy could have totally killed you if he wanted to be aggressive with your mono cannon. Okay. Ready to blunder. Is here. You're making way too many widow mines as well. Widow mines aren't really the answer here. And you're going mech now. So do you I have a question for you. Do you normally go mech uh, with your two base timings? Like after no. you, because you said you like to retake medevac, but if it fails, is is this just a reaction to BC or is this what your default goes into? It's a, it's a reaction for BC. Okay, okay. So I would say a better reaction to BC would be just stay on marine tank medevac, but stop or like uh, the like marine tank starport unit essentially, and stop making tanks at like maybe three tanks or two tanks, because that's okay. still going to help you at dealing with if you like pairs that with a bunch of cyclones or he pairs it with a bunch of Hellions, those tanks will still be very valuable there. But then just make literally like another starport and go Mass Vikings. And okay. still make Marines and shit. You can have like two Medivacs and like 30 Marines or 20 Marines, but also now you have like 16 Vikings or like 20 Vikings. And he shows up with like six BCs versus 20 Vikings. Yamato Cannon, six of your Vikings. And the other 14 Vikings just destroy his BCs. Okay. Okay, we'll speed it up a little bit now. I'll try to give you a good opener here. Your build, is, your opener, your build is definitely. Uh, I want to say it like this: the the way, the position you've put yourself in before this even happened. Okay, the position you're in here before this has even happened is very, very, very weak. Because uh, number one. You had a very slow start to your economy for multiple reasons that we talked about. Multiple reasons. Your your gases were fucked up. Your uh, <coughs> your build order was a little out of out of place. Uh, where the, how it should have gone, which I'll give you. I'll give you a good one. Um, your your scouting and reaction to like your scouting was non-existent, and then you had no reaction to battlecruiser for a little while. You took a ton of damage. And you never killed anything of your opponent. He, nothing of his died. He just teleported away. So you took, a, you, you were slower. You took a lot of damage. 
and nothing for him died. And then you followed that up with, once again, not scouting. You then also made a shitload of economy, and you made a very heavy anti-air defense by making Viking plus Thor plus mass Widow Mines. You have, like, 10 Widow Mines right now. You have 14 Widow Mines. So you have nothing to deal with anything of substance that's of, like, like if this guy did, like, a tank push to you or something, like, that's what you're about to die to, right? You're about to die to, like, a Marine push. Like, you have nothing really versatile here. You're... That's why I said, like, also, you should keep making, like, Marine Tank Viking. Because once you have enough Vikings to control the BCs, you're good. And then you could still have a ground army, and you need to still scout at some point in the game going further. Like, you, you definitely don't scout enough, because you have no idea what he's doing. And he shows up here in a second with that army right there. And it, you had two Thors and, like, six Marines without upgrades. You have no combat shield. You have no upgrades of weapon or armor. You do have stim pack, but you don't use it. And, uh, and then your army just... And even if you did, it wouldn't matter. Because you're fighting against 1-1 one, one Marines, and there's like 30 of them. Or 35 or some shit. And they just ran you over. And now there's nothing to deal with this. Like, you're hoping he runs into a bunch of Widow Mines. And he just keeps backing up, and, you know. Brutal for you. Yeah, you're making way too many Widow Mines. Widow Mines aren't really gonna do anything for you here. Your composition's definitely uh, not gonna... Uh, so, uh, what I would recommend you to be doing here instead, if you if you actually wanted to go mech... I'm not gonna... Again, you wanna go Marine Tank, so I'm not gonna focus on this too long. But Hellions, instead of Widow Mines... And a combination of Thor tank would be fine. And you could also make Viking with that too. That'd be totally fine. And the reason why Hellions would be better than Widow Mines is because this will never genuinely work unless this guy is clueless as to what's going on. Uh, because Widow Mines are only realistically good against somebody who is using low range units, which this guy doesn't have to be doing that because he's Terran specifically. Uh, so, like, it's good against, like, melee units, like Zealots, like Ling, Baneling, stuff like that. It's super good against that, because those are melee units, so they have to run into Widow Mines to do damage. Uh, he's got all range, though, so he doesn't have to run into Widow Mines. Another reason why Widow Mines aren't... Well, another unit Widow Mines would be really good against would be, like, a cluster of air, like Mutalisk. Like, if he was going Vikings, and like, if he was going Phoenix, if he was going Void Rays... It'd be decent then because it's a cluster of air that could get AoE'd really hard by Widow Mine. Widow Mines are actually a terrible choice against Battlecruiser, and the reason why is because the AoE is going to do minimal damage because Battlecruisers are going to be so few of them, and they're really bulky. And another reason why is because Widow Mines can't stack their target. You can't have 10 Widow Mines shoot one target at once. Only one Widow Mine can shoot one target at a time. So if you have 10 Widow Mines right here, and there's a BC that flies over the area, one Widow Mine shoots it, and every other Widow Mine waits. And then another Widow Mine goes, okay, my turn, it shoots. Another Widow Mine goes, okay, now my turn. It has to go one by one by one by one, which means your damage output is really shit versus something like a BC. I didn't know that. Yeah, it doesn't go all at once. The only way it goes all at once is if they all target their own unit. That's why, like, if there was, like, ten Zerglings there, then they would all get targeted and all ten shots would go off. But if it was, like, one Ultralisk, one by one by one would be happening. But yeah, I mean, if the guy runs into your Widowmines like that, then obviously it's going to do something good, but you don't necessarily... Like, tanks could have done the same job there. If you had, like, two tanks right here, you could have done the same exact thing as those, or what those, what those Widowmines did. So your best outcome here would genuinely be if you just had a lot of Thors, maybe make some hill bats with them and just A move across the map, literally. And hope for the best because you have good upgrades and you have like, you know, your economy is like trying to be maintained. I like that you're trying to maintain your economy. This this is starting to look a little bit B to GM me, like bronze to GM series-ish, where you're trying to like always rebuild workers that die and try to like expand and shit. I like, I commend you for your effort on that, but yeah. The Widow Mines are definitely not the play here. Ready for dust off. 
And medevacs as well. I don't know why you're making medevacs. You don't have enough of a brain focus to be making medevacs. Your marines are still 0-0. Zero, zero. This is too much supply for medevac. Okay, he doom drops you. And you destroy his army. Which is pretty expected because you have mass stores and you have way more supply than he does. Which means you're definitely out macroing him. Like, you could definitely push across the map right now. This, So, I would ask you this. Why did you not push right now? I think I did. Okay. Now. Or maybe not. So, would you, would you defend that? That was at... We'll do it. We'll pause it right at the end of the timer. Okay. Of uh, of the medevac drop. Okay, so he's in your base. Everything everything just died. At 1830, absolutely you could push right now. 100%. And again, 1830 is the start here of the timer of when you could be starting to walk across the map. Which means you could probably get to his side of the map by probably like 1910 or something. So you could already have been there by now, because again, 1830, you were there at 1830, so in a full minute, you've walked down the ramp and went there. And you've been sitting here for a while. Field depleted. And then he drops you again and you go home and defend again. So you allowed him to just yeah. rebuild an army and attack you again. If you would have just attacked across the map, you could have literally killed him right now. And the reason why is because you took an amazing fight, you lost almost nothing and killed everything. Definitely want to, and you. And this is the. That's the, one of the reasons why. That's one reason why you took a really good fight. The second reason why you should absolutely have attacked there, is because you were maxed out, and your army can't get any stronger than it already is because you're fucking maxed out. So like, if you sit there, all you're doing is allowing him to catch back up to you and max out as well again. Because you're not gonna. You're. You're gonna. All you're gonna do is just bank resources at this point. So you gotta definitely use your momentum there. And now you push, which is, I like that you're pushing, but the amount of time you gave him, he definitely could have remade a large army. Cause you, you won the first fight 1830 and the second fight that happened, it was only like probably two medevacs or three medevacs of units. It wasn't like a massive doom drop that time. So that it didn't have to be his whole army again. Uh, but that's a lot of that's a lot of time that went by uh, for you to not do anything. It's like over three minutes. Uh, so now you're pushing in, and you move. You literally move commanded that. I don't like that at all. No, I'm not one bit. There's two problems with what you're doing right now. Number. This also again goes back to your lack of scouting. First problem that you have is you're not identifying where his expansions are because you never scout at all. You got to definitely scout. Send like what like send one cheap unit along the side of the map and find out where his bases are. Do it over here as well. Send a cheap unit along the side of the map. Find out where his bases are. Discover where his locations of his bases are before you decide to attack. Before you have to counterattack or anything like that. So you have an idea how many bases your opponent is on in the first place. Again, your scouting is your worst part of your gameplay. You don't ever do it. And if you're gonna be an aggressive kind of player, that is the that the combination doesn't make any sense. No information plus aggressive play means losing a lot of games, essentially. You have to scout more. Uh, so, uh, if you scouted more, absolutely you should be attacking his expansions, which there's nothing on the top side, but there's a lot on the bottom side. Imagine if you attacked here and then moved through, attacked here, moved through, attacked here. You would have broken his economy massively because... Check this out. Look at his main base. Depleted. Depleted. Not too much going on here anymore. He's got nothing there either at the moment. The only reason why there are still patches here is because he took SCVs off of them. Uh, but there's not much left on them, literally. And then over here, this gas and this gas are both running about on empty right now. This gas has 400 left. This gas only has 190. <coughs> That's not a lot of gas here. 
mineral wise again this guy has barely any fucking SCVs here but he does have a decent amount of workers here uh, or sorry a decent amount of uh, available resources here this is like in total probably like 2,000 to like 2,500 resources uh, it's like more like actually like 3,000 it's a decent amount. That's actually a decent amount. But again, the only reason why this even exists is because this guy wasn't fucking macroing very well. It should actually be gone right now. Not gonna lie. It's 22 minutes of this fucking game. Um, but if you got rid of this, if you got rid of this, and you got rid of this, okay? If you got rid of all these new bases, the bottom line I want you to understand here is, is this and this would have no way to compete with that, that, and that. Which is every base both of you had that was not your main or natural. So notice how I didn't even talk about your main and your natural. Because look at them. They're fucking depleted. Gone, gone, gone. Gone, gone. Like this gas is only not, not depleted because you don't have three SCVs on it. But your minerals here and your gas are pretty much fucking done as well if you were to mine them properly. The exact same should be for both of you. So the only bases at this point that should actually be relevant are bases that are not the main or the natural. Because you guys, you know took your third, fourth, fifth later on in the game, which are now the only relevant bases to worry about. Because if this guy had no resources, he can't build units anyways. He's starving. He, you can't make shit for free. So if you killed something that's easier to kill and didn't just walk into a choke point and get AOE'd like crazy by tanks and shit, you would have had a way more cost-efficient fight here, killing bases that have no tanks at all that are mining a lot of resources. Exhausted. So, yeah, he definitely took... Uh, this is a... The worst location you could have ever fought at, which is the location you chose to fight at. <coughs> you definitely don't need to be here right now. And you're getting destroyed by a tank still right now. So now your whole army is practically dead. And here's another problem. You're macroing nothing during the fight. This fight has been going on for over a minute and a half. Because, again, you got you got to his base around 21 and a half minutes. And we're at 23 minutes now. And you're under 100 supply. So, all that tells me is that you didn't really put any emphasis at all into building anything. Factory, barracks, starport. You've built nothing. Other than you're pumping a couple of marines out of your... Like, you're fully queuing out your existing barracks. You're putting way too much emphasis... On the wrong shit. shit. Like this army, I'm gonna tell you right now. The only there, I only saw you micro this army one time, and it was right here. You microed it right here, and you would have actually been better off if you would have probably a moved this air this army right now, probably. The reason why I say that is because you move commanded into a bunch of Marauder and Marine with Stimpak and a bunch of tanks in a choke point, and you move commanded for a very long time, and look how much units you lose as the fight starts. So the fight's starting, right? And you've already lost a, a little bit of your front line, and you're, progressing, you're progressively going into space. You've now lost another round of units in your front line, and you're walking in deeper. You've lost another round of units here. Per, like, almost like two-thirds of your bio, or like at least half of your bio is already dead. And now you finally took your first shot. You finally took your first shot, and all of your bio is already dead. And yeah. you, you made a, you know, a good amount of it, and you made also a lot of medivacs here. So, like, all your bio investment is literally just kind of a waste. And the only, the only benefit you could actually argue that it had is that it meat shielded and absorbed damage so that your Thors could get in position to do damage here. But if you would have just A moved anyways, you would have I feel like you would have had the same outcome and you would have not had to have invested your attention here. A moving that or walking into it the way you did, either way would have been the same outcome. Because this is, again, a terrible place to take a fight at. And if you didn't really focus your attention here on this fight right now and you just A moved like somewhere else... You could have been focusing your attention on fixing your base that is fucked right now. Because this base is fucked up. You gotta fix that. You have so much resources that you're not spending. Like, you can't even make units until units die because you're supply blocked.
Okay, well, the game is pretty much going to be over. I feel like either this guy, wh whoever remaxes faster is going to win the game. And I feel yeah. like it should be you. He won. He, uh, no. Yeah, okay. I mean... Get it. I, okay, okay, well, the, again, that just goes to show that that's the original problem I said is your biggest problem is your, big, your biggest problem is your scouting. Like, you have no idea he has even any of this. If you just attacked this area, like, he can't... It's setting. It's starting to set up. So, you're giving him way too much time. Because you don't know where he is. Did you move, Commander? I want to watch that again. Yeah, okay, so you're over... You, like, I legit think you're... Number, there's two reasons you lose this fight really hard. Number one, I think you're over-microing. Because you're trying to, like, move in and set her step onto a Thor. And number two... Uh, like against a bunch of marines, that's the worst thing ever you're gonna do. Just concave your marines and you don't touch your units, realistically, and you're way better off. There, okay. There, this is another thing that's gonna be complicated, and I really need you to understand this. And this is something that I, I'm not gonna explain a solution here because it would take uh, a lot of time. And when I say a lot of time, I'm not talking like oh, take an hour. Explaining this would probably take like a hundred hours. But you need to understand every unit's micro potential in the game to really make the most of the microing of the unit and if you don't know the full micro potential of the unit the baseline of what you should start with is literally a moving so what happened to you here is the guy shows up right he shows up and you stim packed your bio this is already i would say your first mistake with the way you're engaging this. The way you're engaging this is you're A-moving the area in a single file line, more or less. It's like, it's like a few multiple rows of it, but you're A-moving the area to where the front line of your Marines are going to block the back line of your Marines, and that's not an ideal way to set up this fight. That's the first problem you're having here. So the better way you should have done this, because again, what, what are you afraid of right now? Is he gonna kill a depot? Like, it, you're, you're totally fine if you gave yourself an extra like four seconds to fucking prepare a fight here. You should have grabbed your Marines, moved Commanded down to like right there. And then when you have your Marines in a massive concave like that, then A move forward like that. You'd have a way better spread of units on top of his army. So that would be the first thing you should do to fix your fight here. This, uh, the second thing you're doing that's a problem is if this was just Thor's, stutter stepping into his army repeatedly would be more or less okay. That'd be fine. Because Thor's are going to kill Marines at a somewhat slow pace and you want to maximize your dps to get on top of the thors and uh you know if you kill a thor you want to make sure you're already in range to start shooting the next thor so you're trying to maximize the little bits of moving that you can do when your attack is on cooldown but you don't want to do that against marines and this guy has a lot of marines here because if you do if you keep moving single file into marines with like like these units like this He's going to delete your units as fast as you walk into him. Because he is going to have his units in a massive line. Because he doesn't micro at all. He literally stim packs and he moves you. So he stands there just shooting, 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 shooting. And you're walking into him. You're walking into like 30 Marines with like six at a time. And by the time the first six get deeper into range, they're going to be dead. And the next six are going to take their place. And they're going to be dead. And then the next guys are going to be dead. And the next guys are going to be dead. You're, you're walking into him with too little against marines you, first of all you should never walk into marines like that and secondly you're walking in too little to where he's just killing you as you walk in repeatedly so as you can see here you dive into, into these units in little bits and you're going to watch all your marines just literally fucking die repeatedly so you're starting to concave right now not great though because you're blocking yourself right that's why the move down here would have been better so you could add a better concave before you a moved and now that you're blocking yourself you're, you go oh well, i'm blocking myself so now let's walk forward and you start walking forward into him. And watch how many units die as you walk forward. You just lost like five marines taking one fucking attack. Like you, you walked in, lost like five marines in that. And now you take your first shot. And then you do it again. You just lost another like five marines walking in again. And then he does it too. I do not know fucking why he does it as well. Neither one of you is micro marines properly. A moving and getting yourself as much time up uptime as possible is what you want to be doing here. Not walking into your opponent.
But then you read start shooting Thor, right? And then uh, Thors are a lot tankier. Than, like, so a Thor, one Thor. Now we're going to talk about DPS for a second. One Thor versus one Marine will do more damage than one Marine. That is a fact. Okay? One Thor will do more damage than one Marine. But we're not talking about the difference of one Thor and one Marine when we're talking about investment here. One Thor is worth the same amount of supply as six Marines. Because it's six supply unit versus a one supply unit. Six Marines are going to do way more fucking damage than one Thor versus Marines. So six Marines are way more DPS than one Thor. And six Marines also die way faster than one Thor. So the fact that you target fire to Thor there is 100% the worst thing you could have ever done to yourself. Because it's not only does it have like eight times the amount of health. <coughs> a Thor has like eight times more health than a Marine does. But it also has more armor than a Thor does. Which means it's going to reduce more of the damage your Marines do. Because it has passive armor on top of whatever upgrades it has, which is level 3. So your chances of getting damage, good damage on that Thor while Marines are killing your Marines off of it is really low. You're just, it's not worth it. You would have been way better off killing his Marines as a priority first and then attacking whatever's left, like the Thors. <clears throat> so you, got, you just got fucking murdered there really hard because of how you microed that. Uh, and I'm not even saying, oh, you would have won if you microed differently. You were fucked either way because your army was way substantially smaller than his. Uh, because you literally just did not macro throughout the whole process of fighting his base for ever since 21 minutes. So it's been like five minutes of no macro. Uh, other than, again, all, you, you only macroed out of what was left of your base. That's all you did. You didn't make anything new. You made nothing new. You got to replace shit, right? So, yeah, you got, you got fucked. You didn't have nearly enough of an army that you should have had, and you also never scouted, and you had no idea what he had either. You're just playing a, a lot of this game was blind. So, I gave you a lot of problems here, and if you want a genuine solution, okay, I'm not going to tell you you have to do this, but I tried to give you as much tips as I could throughout this coaching lesson. I know it sounds like it's a lot of negative, but it's because you there's a lot of problems this is why I don't normally advocate people to play like this when they're in Platinum League or anywhere below Platinum League. It, they're fucking, it's gonna, the game's going to be a mess. So my biggest advice I can give you is try to start learning, number one, how to scout. If you want to keep playing this way, try to, keep, start, try to start learning how to scout your opponent's base and how to read what their base looks like to at least a decent degree. Try to scout, try to attempt scouting and be able to understand, okay, you're probably going for this. You need to do that. That is mandatory. If you don't do that, you're always going to fucking lose. The second thing you need to do is you need to start trying to understand what unit is good against what. This is not something you can learn in one day. This is something that will take like a year to get used to. Or like at least a few months if you play a lot. This is something that you don't just learn in one second. You need to get comfortable at learning what counters what and what you're comfortable with making at what time of the game. So like you're again, the, the example I'm giving you here is your reaction to battle cruisers was not a good one in my opinion. You started making Viking and then you abandoned it to make mass widow mines and Thor. And that was awful. That was fucking awful. That was that was the worst reaction you could have given yourself because it's so bad versus battle cruisers for so many reasons. Um Yeah, it just wasn't like that that's something again now you know, okay, Vikings are good against BCs. Cool. And then I can also, they're cheaper, which also allows me to make Marine Tank, which allows me to deal with more than just BCs. Which if you did that, you would have crushed this guy, no problem. Because he went for a mass Marine push on you after the BC. So that would have been great. And that's just one example. People can play StarCraft 2 a lot of ways, and you got to learn a lot of different ways to deal with a lot of different shit. And you got to also not forget what you learned two months ago because you didn't play against someone who also went mass BCs for like a long time or something like that. So it, that's why it takes a long time. You got to get used to always feeling like you have a plan versus what you're up against. That's the most confusing part about this game. And it really comes down to scouting and not going, well, he could do anything. It's about scouting and going, well, he can't do like a bunch of the builds that are possible 
He can only do a certain amount of things now, which limits his options. For instance, if you scout someone going for a fusion core and a battle cruiser, you're not thinking to yourself, oh, he's going for a ghost rush with nukes. You're thinking to yourself, oh, he's probably going to go battle cruisers, right? Like, you're limiting his build. And then if you scout him again later, and now you see he's got eight racks, one factory, one starport, you're not thinking to yourself, oh, he's going mass battle cruisers. Even though he opened battle cruiser, because he doesn't have like seven starports, you're thinking to yourself, oh, he's probably got mass marines. Okay, man. Does it, does it, I know you said you gotta go, but yeah, I gotta go. I hope what I okay, so I'll, I'll send you a vod of this after, and I'll even make you the I'll still make you the fucking guide here. But uh, I guess have a good rest of your night, and I'll finish my thoughts here. You don't have to be here for this; you can just watch the vod later. But I'm gonna explain my thoughts on this shit, well, like for the recap here for the final bit. But have a good rest of your night, man. I'll see you later. Thanks for doing the lesson. I hope it helps you. Okay. And uh, bye bye. Later, man. Uh, but yeah, guys, uh, anyone out there that's listening to, uh, this right now, I hope this makes sense. I hope this makes sense, but there's only so much you can tell somebody if they are not prepared to play aggressive and they want to learn how to play aggressive. I'm totally down to try to help you play aggressive. I'll try my best. I did this in this coaching lesson. I tried my best to help uh, Keone play aggressive, learn how to play aggressive. But there, if there are too many problems to make something work properly, I need to give you some foundational disclaimers that can give you alternatives. Because I, I can't wave a fucking magic wand and be like, you can now play this game aggressively. There's, there's a fundamental misunderstanding of a lot of shit in this game. And you have to build yourself up as a player to understand here and there, all these kinds of things, to be able to under, to be able to, to handle this shit. <laughs> Literally. It's fucking true. Like, I can't just make you good in two seconds because if, you have to be able to do some shit yourself already. All right, I'm going to make a game here and uh, I'll make a this is going to be a uh, a two base all-in oh, build yeah. but yeah anyways I don't I, I'm not trying to be a hard ass here I'm not trying to be uh, uh, too too real too mean or anything like that uh, I think he had to go generally just because he had to go I don't know I, that's probably why because uh, we did only schedule an hour and we went for 80 minutes already and here I am doing fucking more after he left, because I said I would. But, yeah, no, you, you can't have, like, no... You can't have no foundational gameplay and then expect to be aggressive and have it work. Aggressive play is the hardest fucking thing to do in this game. Effectively. So, anyways, we'll talk about the build. We'll stop talking about what should not be happening. We'll talk about what should be happening, okay? We'll say this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. Keone, if you watch this from here, from going forward, right now, if you can do what I'm about to do, this is what you need to be able to accomplish to play aggressively in StarCraft 2, okay? If you can't do what I'm going to do right now, work on it. Because otherwise you're fucked, and you won't be able to do it. And it's not going to be that complicated either. So I make a barracks, I make a gas. I'm now going to rally my next SCV across the map. I'm now going to rally my command center back to my mineral line. So that my SCVs from now on don't go across the map. What's going on? I'm, st I'm just stacking my patches, you know, getting my patches going. Saturate my gas. Saturate my gas. Still making SCVs. Rally my SCV on the barracks to the natural. Immediately start a reactor, or sorry, a, a reaper, and a orbital command. Get ready to build a command center. SCV scouts and goes, oh cool, okay, he's got double gas in the barracks. Let's get out of here. He's got no proxy, and he's double gassing, which means he's not expanding. Cool beans. It means we're looking at someone who could potentially be more aggressive in the form of tech. 
but he's not proxying me, so I'm not going to worry about that right this second. Now let's go ahead and make a depot in, our, in front of our door here to, you know, not only make a depot that we need, but also get the wall off going. Now we can go ahead and make a reactor. We're not really afraid of a proxy. This is exactly what our dude last game was doing, was making a reactor on his racks and wanting to go to Marines behind this, which is totally fine. But now that we know he's not proxying, we need to go scout him with the Reaper. Okay. We're now going to start a second gas. And really quickly with this gas, we're going to be starting our factory. And as we start our factory, we're going into his base to scout what he's doing behind this. Tech lab on the barracks. And he made a Marine. Okay. Cool. Two Marines. Let's go ahead and get out of here. Let's try to leave. Does he have a natural? No, not yet. So it looks like we're playing against a bio player that wants to have stim pack. Right? That's what you would think, right? Like, okay, cool. Stimpak guy. Awesome. Notice how my Reaper is not dead. We got it in and got it out. Awesome. We got a nice scout off. Now we're going to go to make another depot. Our natural's done. Keep making Marines. And now rally our natural, our main to our natural, because we're fully saturating the main when this depot's done. And we can start saturating the natural. Let's take our Reaper and go back in as we start the starport. So get a tech lab on the on the factory, start a starport, keep making marines, and go back into his base one more time again. Keep making SCVs as well while we can. He's making marauders and marines now. It looks like he's gonna do a bio timing. This is totally fine, right? You're like, cool. I scouted you're making marine marauder off of Rax. Awesome. Try to read what his build is. This is not gonna be the same every single game. Everyone plays their own way. So <coughs> scouting is something that needs to happen. Now he's going ground army, so making tanks makes a lot of sense we don't really need to make vikings here because he's going ground army so let's go ahead and pair now uh reactor on our starport let's get a couple of uh more racks here let's go up to like a total of three racks with a starport and a factory while we continue to make scvs and try to keep making depots so we don't block okay keep making our our bio units make our another tank now let's take our Reaper and go back into his base again. And if the, he lets us in again, awesome. We'll get another scout off. This is going to be huge if our opponent would allow us to do this. It's not always going to happen. But if it doesn't happen, we can always scan a little bit after the Reaper dies to just try and see what we're going to be dealing with. Okay, so now we're getting to his base again. We see, okay, more of the same shit. Barracks. We see gas is still being mined. Do we see a natural yet or some shit? He's not even in his base, so now we need to get ready to be attacked. We need to make sure our tanks are sieged up. But maybe put our second tank on the high ground. We're probably getting attacked right now, because why is he not in his base? Right? We can even put, like, a depot down here, just in case he tries to drop us, if that was going to be the case here. Keep making units. Keep making depots. We can even make our engineering bay at this point. Uh, we should. We would have definitely prioritized the engineering bay a little bit faster earlier if we uh, were up against the starport base player, like a battlecruiser kind of guy. But since this guy is going full ground so far, it was so what it looks like. We don't need to prioritize getting missile turrets or some shit really fast. And we can't afford the upgrades really fast if we're going to go for like a big-ass all-in attack where we have like a two-base timing attack of, you know, constantly producing tanks and medevacs and marines and shit. Like our resources are kind of tight as shit as it is. We can barely afford what we're doing. Okay, so now we can be done making SCVs. We're fully saturated on two bases. We're dropping mules constantly whenever we have the re energy for it. Or attempting to, at least. And now, my army is fucking huge. Early on in the game. My army is massive at this point in the game. And now a great time to go for an attack would be something like as soon as we have stim pack and as soon as we have plus one weapons or close to it we could go for a move out and that move out would be well timed to be you know a max power spike for us let's go ahead and scout him again what are you doing what the fuck is this guy doing right like his army's like mid map somewhere just chilling or some shit but yeah, like he's moving out right now. He's walking across the map. I just saw a little edge of his ass right there. But again, we're just making units. So it doesn't really matter. Because we're trying to get a read and we're trying to make a logical assumption as to what the fuck we're doing. 
I could have prioritized Vikings over medevacs if it was air-based. I could have prioritized turrets a little bit faster over an upgrade if it was air-based. And now I have this crazy, crazy, crazy efficient army here. <coughs> to where I have a lot of shit. We're hitting a power spike because we just got Stimpak. Let's go ahead and move out now. Get all my units and go attack my opponent. Let's go straight up, attack our opponent. And keep macroing during the fight. So now, behind this, you can now be like, cool, let's... Go, let's start a third just in case I somehow don't win the game right now because my I'm at, I'm at, I am at the maximum power spike I'm gonna be at it's not getting any stronger than it is right now like I'm still making units but like my attack is initiated so I'm still making units during the fight or during move, the move out here still making mule drops we're moving out still pumping all of our racks all my money is being spent the whole time I'm macroing the whole time I'm not stopping my macro spread out our bio do a scan ahead and let's say his army's there we could have a pre-spread, engage with Stim, and then siege our tanks as we move in. Easy fucking peasy. And we have a, a knowledge through the scouting that this is this guy's expansion that we need to be killing right now. And if you, if for whatever reason, if you're like, well, Vibe, now I have, and I'm also macroing while I'm talking right now. Let's say we go, okay, well, is this his only base? Let's go ahead and scout one more time on the edge of the map. Go check the other bases right now. Are there hidden bases on the map while I'm still macroing? I'm not sitting there with my thumb up my ass going, I'm doing nothing. No, I'm macroing because we're trying to make sure we're not allowing this guy to have more economy than he should have at any point in time. No hidden bases. No fucking random expansions. That's more important than running up to his main right now. And why is that more important than running to his main? Look at mine. Gases are halfway gone. Mineral patches are like half depleted. The, all the little patches are pretty much gone at this point. They're looking pretty fucking sad. So I can imagine that my opponent's mineral line looks about the same, right? Because why should I have way more or way less mining than he does? There's no reason. Like, we both have the same shit. We both have the same workers. Even if we're the different races, it's the same shit, really. Oh, probe and an SCV and a drone all mine at the same pace. A mule changes it a little bit, but you get the point. Now, let's just say I wanted to do an attack here. Here's a good idea. Watch. There's two ways we could do this. Here's the first way we could do this. Let's be like, oh, how do I want to engage this guy's main base? It's really hard to push up that ramp. I'll just walk up the fucking ramp. Go like this. Seed your tanks to the low ground. Load up your medevacs. Go to the high ground. Unload. And now you cover your drop into his base. And once you have the drop covered... You could unseage your tanks now. If, if he wasn't, if like you pushed him and it was it, or if like he backed up, you could unseage your tanks. Bring your medevacs back for just a second. Load up. And then once again, go into the base. Drop in. And then go back after the drop is over. Siege your tanks. Load up your medevacs. And call it a day blah 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 shit like that that's a great way you could do it another way you could do it as well instead of walking up the ramp would be something like this so the first way i showed you by the way i think that's the best way you could do it if you want to attack someone's base if they're defending themselves <coughs> sorry another way you could do it could be like this you could take your tanks and uh your medevacs, like, watch. Load up your load up some medevacs, okay? Load your medevacs full with shit here, and then you attack with your tanks and your in your army. You stim pack. You take your medevacs, move in, siege your tanks when you're in range to fight shit, and then drop your medevacs in the guy's base. And now suddenly, once again, same 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 situation here. Once you break the ramp, you can unseat your tanks and move in. The same situation happens where you're not going okay. Well, I'm going to attack my opponent, so what am I going to do? I'm going to right-click right there. And then have all of this fucking army doing full DPS on the fucking choke point of the ramp. And you're walking in little by little by little by little by little. Losing most of your army as you're trying to engage. You don't want to fucking attack like that. It's always going to be negative about how you initiate a fight like that. So you got to really think, how do I want to maximize what I have and how can I make this work better? So I hope that makes sense. But, again, final disclaimer. Being aggressive is the hardest form 
of gameplay to do in StarCraft 2, and it's only even harder when you're not at a level where everything feels natural to you through the form of macro and basic unit understanding of like things that you're doing platinum in my opinion is still too early to be an aggressive player so that's my disclaimer and again i tried to give as much information about it as i could i'll still help you if that's what you want I, like i will but i i want to make sure that that's very apparent okay because i can't not say that and watch someone make 500 mistakes and then go, you're doing great. Here's all you got. One thing you got to change and you're going to win now. It's not how the, the fucking game works. You have to be able to handle a baseline of what some form of aggressive gameplay requires. And that only comes from experience. So you will eventually get there at some point anyways if you're playing aggressive all the time, no matter what. You will eventually get there. But I think that the path would be easier if you focus on macro more. And you really understand solid foundations of macro play, which is why if you want to watch Bronze to GM series, I totally recommend that for Platinum League. I highly recommend Platinum series B to GM to get a better understanding of your build. Because the reason why I say that is the build as well was fucked. It was. So if your build's fucked and your aggressive play is fucked you're, and your scouting is fucked, if everything's fucked, you're not going to have good aggressive gameplay. Something needs to be good there. And you might want to start... like So don't just think, oh, well, Vibe said be good at StarCraft, so apparently that means I have to do everything at once. No, it doesn't. Work on one thing at a time. Work on getting a good build. Then work on your scouting. Then work on learning how to read what your scout even means. Then work on balancing all of those things together. Then work on trying to add in some basic aggressive moves. Good foundational progress. Not fucking do everything at once before anything's good. Because that's all that's going to do is make the game feel hard as shit in Platinum when it doesn't have to be that way. It's really not that way. But anyways, I hope that helps. Uh, again, I'll, Keone, I'll send this to you. I hope you watch this as well. I hope, I hope you watch the end of this later on when you have time. And uh, I got to... I will say this too. I'm not trying to rag on Keone here. So I mean, some people might think that. And Keone, I hope you don't think that yourself. That I'm trying to like give you a bunch of shit right now. Uh, I hope you don't feel that way when you watch this later. If you ever watch this. But I, I'm just trying to give you the best advice that I can. And give you the most realistic info that I can. And there was a lot of info here that I feel like is applicable to you. If you want to continue down your aggressive gameplay path. But if you want to, if you want to detour and go back and build yourself up as a player before you come back to this, I highly recommend Bronze to GM series, which is all over my YouTube channel. Terran B to GM series. Uh, aggressive to base example. Okay, anyways, Keone, I'll send you that replay. Props to Keone as well for uh, attempting to play aggressive in Platinum. It's fucking hard. It's super hard. Yeah, and you're, no one's going to do it correctly. I'm telling you right now, there's not a single Platinum player out there that can play aggressive properly. And if you think that they are, if you think there is, that guy's not fucking Platinum anymore. Because uh, no one in Platinum can play aggressively properly. Everyone fucks up something. Like a lot of things. Uh, even players in Diamond suck at playing aggressive. Uh, like, they're, they're, it's like a learning curve. I think Masters League is the first league when you really get players that can play aggressively decent. But... Anyways, guys, much love. Thank you for watching. I hope I hope this helps. I hope this wasn't too uh, too mean or anything like that. <laughs> Just trying to give you the best advice. But thanks for doing a lesson, Keone. I hope it helps. And uh, I wish you the best of luck in the future, man. Much love. And I will see you next time, dude. Or I'll see you guys, all the viewers out there. I'll see you guys next time in the next session, whatever that is, or the next video. See you next time. Good luck and peace.